So in the last couple of videos that I've done, I mentioned that I purchased a, a Remington Model 7600 chambered in 30-06, and I haven't really gone into details how I ended up with it. So I ended up with this gun. I've thought about buying one of these for a while. You know, as a kid, I always read about them. You know, if you read the Benoit books, any of that stuff, I always read about them, and I always hunted with a Remington 7400 semi-automatic and chambered in 270, and that's always been my go-to. Um, that's what I've shot all my deer except for one with, and it's kind of special to me. And it's nothing I want to stop carrying, um, but I've always wanted one of these guns, and it's always been in the back of my mind. And again, it was never at the, you know, a real priority, but, and then Remington, you know, they stopped being made, and they became harder and harder to get, and the prices have gone up, and I'm not gonna spend 1,500 bucks or 2,000 bucks on a, on a pump Remington. You know, I figured over the years, if I find one that's the right price um, and is in the, the right kind of shape that I'm looking for, uh, then I'll do it. And I got a call the other day, a couple weeks ago now, uh, that one had come in on trade that morning. And yeah, it was the right price. It, it The stock is a little bit beat up, um, but overall it's in really good condition. None of the bluing is worn off anywhere. It doesn't look like it's hardly been carried. The mechanics of it is, are fantastic. It's a solid gun. It doesn't seem to have been abused in any way, shape, or form. And if you look at my gun, my 7400, you can tell that I've carried it a lot. The bluing's worn off around here. Same thing with my father's. Um, it's seen a lot of wet weather, seen a lot of snow. And you can tell this gun hasn't seen a lot of that. Um, so yeah, you know, it was, the price was right and figuring that they're, they're kind of hard to get right now. I figured, why not? You know, I've mentioned that I, I wish it was chambered in 270 and it has nothing to do with the fact that I don't like a 30-06. Um, I'm really not into to specific calibers and ballistics and, and all that stuff. You know, a lot of people can get hot in the collar about that. And uh, I mean, I, I don't care if it's 35 whale, 30-06, 270, 280. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, I feel like a hunter who knows his gun well and is a good hunter can get the job done with whatever tool he has. For me, I just wanted a 270 for continuity. Uh, I have a 270, I have plenty of ammo for that gun. And you know, it reduces the likelihood of me mixing up rifle shells and grabbing 30 odd six when I should have grabbed 270 and vice versa. I uh, just have some redundancy built in. So yeah, so I, I got this gun and uh, you know, we shot it for the first time just with the iron sights last week and shot well, I wasn't really getting too particular about sighting it in and whatnot. I don't even know if the iron sights were, were accurate or not. I just wanted to make sure that it fired well and, and you know, kind of get a feel for what it felt like. And so shot, I don't know, four rounds through it and shot fine. So I ended up, I wanted a peep sight. And the reason being is, you know, I kind of wanted a Benoit rifle. Um, again, I, as a kid growing up, I read about, you know, the Benoits. So there's a couple options for peep sights. I know a lot of people are buying the Skinner peep sights. Two main reasons why I ended up going with the Williams peep sight. First and foremost, it was 39 bucks. Uh, the Skinner sight's 99 bucks, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna like shooting a peep or not. Um, so, you know, I was like, 39 bucks, what am I out? Um, I don't wanna spend 100 bucks on a sight. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a piece of metal with a hole in it. Uh, you know, it's maybe a little over, overly simplistic, but it, I think they both will serve you just as well. I will say the Skinner sights do look nicer. Second reason was, that's what I've always read about and I kind of wanted to keep with that nostalgia of the Williams Peep sight, um, so I, I just stuck with Williams. You'll see in my last video, which I'll put a link right up here, I installed the sight, easy to install. So once, you know, once I get the Peep installed and I was using it, it was a pretty interesting phenomenon. And you know, I guess just speaking from a physiological standpoint, um, when you pull that gun up, your eye automatically centers that bead right in the, in the aperture, or if you take the aperture out in the middle of that circle. So the aperture or the ring gets blurred out, and then you essentially only have two points of interest that you need to focus on. Um, you basically have your bead, and then your target, or in, in our case, a lot of times, a deer. And as opposed to an iron sight, which we're gonna have three points of interest to focus on, you've got the back portion of the iron sight, you know, the groove, to put the bead in, and then you have the bead to focus on to line up in the groove, and then you have the target. So you have three points of interest at different focal points that makes it a little more complex for your eyes to focus on those three focal points versus with a peep. You pull up, it automatically, it's amazing, it automatically centers that bead right in the middle of the circle, 
and the circle eventually essentially just disappears because you're focusing that bead on the target. You don't have to worry about that third point of interest to focus on. Um, it's it's pretty interesting. Some studies suggest that when we focus on a particular visual field, certain elements within that field get enhanced visual processing. Uh, so for instance, when you're shooting at a deer, you're hyper-focused on that target, and all the elements within that visual field that you're focusing on get additional processing, and your brain is super in tune to that area of vision. Um, and everything else around it is basically non-existent. You know, you, when you think of when you're shooting at a deer, you're super honed in on that one area and basically everything else is out of sight, out of mind. So it essentially filters out stuff that's not important and allows you to focus on what matters. And in our case, it would be a, a nice buck. Probably one reason I've never used a peep sight before was I always thought they were overly simplistic. And I'm gonna be honest, I was totally ignorant about it. You know, a lot of guys take the aperture out, which I took the aperture out of this. You feel like there's just a lot of room for air and you feel like you can move that uh, bead a lot within that that opening you're looking through and as I've done a little bit of reading you know even if you're off a little bit and let's say like an extreme circumstance you could be let's say if you moved over and you had that bead off by two thousandths of an inch I believe at 50 yards that puts you at somewhere is like 1.6 inches off you know and then if you have that bead one one thousandth of an inch off you're basically less than an inch off at 50 yards and is that a deal breaker for deer hunting in Maine? I don't think so I mean Two inches, if I'm on center mass, two inches isn't gonna make or break my, my kill shot. Uh, but yeah, you know, that, that peep, that rear peep with the aperture out, um, allows for a wider field of view and faster target acquisition. And it's true, when, when I took the aperture out, I was like, man, you know, yeah, you get faster target acquisition. That bead is dead center. So yeah, let's shoot, I'm at 25 yards right now and I don't know where it's hitting. I left the iron sight on when I put the peep sight on and tried to get that lined up with the iron sights. I don't know if the iron sights were on or not. We were hitting paper at 50 yards the other day with the iron sights, so I suspect I should be able to get it on paper with my first shot. Uh, so let's get it dialed in and uh, we'll see how long it takes to, to do that. I plan on shooting about a box of shells anyway, so um, I'm gonna start with 150 grain and uh, We'll see if we can get her dialed in. All right, my first shot, I'm just gonna aim for the plywood. Make sure I can hit the plywood at least. And try not to hit the camper. Okay, so I'm about middle of the plywood. I'm gonna take the first target on the right now. See where we're at there. See if I can tighten that group up a little bit. I'm not quite used to the trigger pull, so I've got two about an inch apart over to the left and then one a little bit further to the right. I'll take a few more shots to see if I can get a feel for the gun here. Um, I am hitting the bullseye, but not as not as tight as a group as I'd like. Let's see if I can hone it in a little bit better. So, my last two were about an inch apart, slightly low, and a tad bit to the left. I'm gonna move back to 50 yards, and go take a couple more. So I'm gonna shoot a few more with it. Finish off that box of shells. Pretty happy with how it shoots. Just gonna get used to the trigger pull and that peep sight. And see if I can tighten up that group a little bit more. And, but yeah, shoots pretty good. And I'm pretty excited. Maybe I'll carry it a day or two this fall. So, until next time, get outside. Let's go.
for the soul. See ya.